This is worksheet two of the ionic compounds packet. So just a reminder from uh, worksheet one, which you should have already completed. A compound is a combination of two or more different elements. So we've already learned about all the different elements on the periodic table. And now in this packet, we're learning uh, what happens when specifically a metal and a non-metal combined. All right, because ionic compounds are metal and a non-metal. In the next packet, we'll talk about covalent compounds where we have two non-metals. So, it's important in being able to talk about these things that we have names for our ionic compounds. All right, we know what we call all of our individual atoms. Their names are on the periodic table. Uh, but once they combine, we have to have a different name. So, we're always going to use these rules here, which are pretty straightforward. Uh, first, we're going to name the metal. That should always be listed first. And then we're going to name the non-metal. But for the non-metal, we're going to change the ending, the very last syllable of its name, to IDE. Why? It's just a convention that we all follow. Okay, so if we look at this example down here, all right, uh, this is potassium, that's the metal, okay, oxide, right? It was oxygen, but we've changed it to oxide. Uh, so the other thing that you might notice is that there's this little 2, which is a subscript. It's written down low. Subscripts tell you how many of each atom are in the compound. So it turns out, and we'll learn actually in the next worksheet why they combine in these amounts, but when potassium and oxygen combine, actually uh, two potassiums combine with just one oxygen. You notice that there's no number on the oxygen. Well, when there's no number, we assume that it's a one. Okay, it's just like, I guess, a time-saving thing that if there's a one, you don't have to write it. Okay, so if a subscript is not written, assume that it's one. Sometimes it helps to kind of visualize these with drawings. So what this formula here is telling us is that we have... Uh, two potassiums, so there's let's say an atom of potassium, here's another atom of potassium, and we have uh, one oxygen. Alright, and so we would call this, um, as is written above, potassium, that name of the metal doesn't change, and then instead of oxygen, oxide, because we add that IDE ending to the end. Okay, so there are some examples here. Right, um, so if we look at this formula CSF, right, our first element listed always by convention is going to be the metal. You can count on that. So in the formula, they list the metal first. So we look up what CS is on the periodic table, or ideally we have it memorized, and we see that it's cesium. We write that down. We look up on the periodic table that uh, F is uh, fluorine. So instead of fluorine, we're going to write fluoride. So that's the thing that some people forget, is to change the second name to put an IDE on the end. All right. Uh, now they also ask you to fill in this column for the number of atoms. So what we do here is we really just add up the subscripts, which in this first formula is kind of funny. There's no subscripts, right? So remember, if there's no subscript, we assume there's one cesium and one fluorine, and so that gives us a total of two atoms. Right. If we were to draw a picture of it, I'll do that up here. We'd have one cesium, we'd have one fluorine, and they're combined together. All right. In our next example, uh, first thing listed is always our metal. So RB stands for rubidium, and the second thing listed is oxygen. So we call it oxide. All right. Uh, and then when we go to add up the atoms, this time we've got two rubidiums and just one oxygen. So two plus one gives us. Three. So if we drew a picture of this, we'd have like RB, RB, this will fit down here, oh, okay, rubidium oxide. So um, you're going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the chart to the best of your ability, and then we will check your work when you get to class.